Hi everyone, I just wanted to do this quick video, hopefully it's quick, and try and address some of the questions I've been getting about meetings in Brightspace. So follow along and I'm going to give you this brief overview of using meetings in Brightspace. So once you log on to Brightspace, go head over to your course, you can do that for the course waffle, or down here in my courses, click on your course, and all of you have been set up the virtual classroom and I'll get into Google Meet in a little bit as well. Uh, to set up a meeting you're going to click on virtual classroom over here and I know many of you have been doing it. Once that loads up you can see any active meetings that you already have scheduled or any recorded meetings down here. Number one question and number one thing I'm going to say is please record your meetings. It's really important for a lot of reasons. If you had any issues in your classroom discipline wise or otherwise we can go back in and see what's going on in there we can see who was logged in also once you have the meeting recorded you can click over here under actions on the three dots on the side and you can see the attendance so you can click on attendance and you can see who attended that meeting and it'll pop up the, the students uh, that attended that meeting I would say those are two big reasons why you should record your meetings uh, it also lets the students that missed it go back in after you can they can download it whatever it may be uh, definitely I would suggest recording your meetings and again only the people that have access to your course will, will see those recorded meetings. To set up a meeting you click on the plus sign and you should most of you should be familiar with this by now. You need to give your meeting a title, you need to choose a date and a time. For our purposes I'll choose now but you would always choose a date and a time. Uh, you can also make your meeting repeat uh, and you can choose for how many weeks you want it to repeat. Technically, if you set up five meetings and had them repeat for six weeks, you could schedule five meetings and it would give you uh, meetings every day for six weeks. So choose your date and time. Choose your duration. You can put up to 240 minutes for your duration. Uh, again, you can choose repeat. I would select automatically record. I would select publish and I would invite the entire class. Uh, the only time you wouldn't invite the entire class is if you were doing some small group. That's a different situation. I, I won't get into that right now. If you were to have a guest speaker come in or something like that, you could allow external participants and then this would generate a link and you could send that link to your guest speaker. Otherwise, press save. Now you can see that that meeting is scheduled. Uh, when the time comes, it's time to start the meeting. You just have to go over to the right side, click the three dots and click launch. I don't have any other options here because my meeting has already started, but if I had another meeting that was coming up and I hadn't started it yet, I could copy the external link or I could edit the meeting or change the invitees, anything like that for a meeting that hasn't started yet. But for us right now, I will launch a meeting and go into it and show you a few things. You can see here uh, uh, the ability to join in with a dial-up. I don't believe your students will see that. We had that removed for students, so only the teacher sees that. All you have to do is click join when the meeting is ready to start always select microphone so you have your microphone on as well and one big thing you want to remind your students of if at this point a little thing pops up in the left hand side saying do you want to give uh, this site access to your microphone or your computer please make sure they say allow so here we are in the meeting tool I'm not going to go over this too too much uh, I do have an older video that, that goes over all the features of the meeting tool this is the whiteboard and again there you can write on the whiteboard and, and all that stuff with the tools on the side uh, go ahead and play with that if you're interested. You can toggle on your camera off and on if you're interested. I am not going to do that. And you can share your screen. And you would just choose your screen or a tab and share. On the left hand side here you'll see the list of participants. Uh, when your students are all logged in they'll, they'll be down here listed under your participants list. One really important thing over here, something super, super important, this button right here, the little grayed out microphone, allows you to mute all of your students immediately at once. You can click that and they'll all be muted. This button here brings up a lot of different options that you can lock out. If you don't want them to be able to share their webcam, you can lock it. If you don't want them to be able to speak, you can lock it. One thing I would suggest that all of you lock in your meetings is private messaging. That won't allow them to talk privately to each other. They would have to use the public chat and if you don't want them even using the public chat, turn that off as well. You might want them to speak or, or put their cameras on instead of using the chat on the side. Although you might have students that would rather only use the chat on the side. So that's up to you guys, but that's where you would find that list of options. Then as we keep going on, that's where you would find the public chat. Uh, I've explained before in other videos, there's a, a polling feature where you can get some immediate feedback right here to your students. And something new since uh, 
since my last video is the breakout room. So you can actually click on create breakout rooms, put students into, an, into however many rooms you want, set a duration, assign those rooms, and then you can press create. And then once you start that breakout room, uh, you'll get an option here to start the breakout room. They'll all automatically get put into their breakout room and they'll all automatically return to the main room once that time, time frame is uh, completed. So that's a great feature uh, to use inside of this tool. Uh, you can also upload slideshows, images, and you can draw on them, do multiple slides as you, as you go through. Uh, I won't get too much into that. And you can also maximize your whiteboard. A lot of people found it small, so you can press on the, the little arrows and you can maximize your whiteboard to make it bigger. The biggest question I've had this week is about sound inside of here. So when teachers are sharing their screens and they want to show a video clip, the company that we use here is called Bongo. It does not have the ability to play sound like some other tools, but it is the most safe and secure tool that we have. And I would always recommend using this tool. So if you're interested in playing video clips, I would advise that you maybe give them the link ahead of time, get them to watch something ahead of time before they come into your class. And then you're not spending time in your class watching that video. You can have spend the time in your class discussing the video, things like that. One workaround uh, that I would suggest is just quite simply, if your sound is playing out loud, either on some speakers or through, through some speakers, if your sound is playing out loud into the room, it will automatically get picked up by the microphone on your computer. So that is one way to get around that. The sound's playing from the video, it'll get picked up by the microphone. And I believe a lot of you are already doing that. <laughs> there is one other workaround that, that we're, we're kind of testing out. Uh, it is a lot more difficult, so I'm not gonna get into that right now. Uh, however, I have talked to Bongo, the company, and they tell me the ability to do sound in here is coming, uh, and that's the best I can do right now. So I would suggest finding maybe some alternatives or like I said, broadcasting the sound out loud. If you absolutely must play some videos in your class, I, I've got a, another workaround for you. So I'm gonna end this meeting and I'm gonna go back to my class. I'm going back to my virtual classroom. Uh, some other benefits of using the virtual classroom tool by Bongo, again, like I mentioned, is that attendance. So you can click click on attendance, you can see who was in that meeting, you can see the recordings. It is awesome. Please record your meetings, use the tool to take your attendance. It's really, really great. Now I'm going to head back and just talk to you a bit about Google Meet and using Virtual Classroom through your announcements. So if I was to go to a new announcement, most of you should be familiar with this, you always have to give it a headline. I have integrated Google Meets into the Quick Links button. So like I said, if you absolutely have to broadcast sound in your meeting, I would suggest using Google Meets. I would suggest doing it this way only. Uh, please use it through your announcements tool or your activity feed in Brightspace. That way that link is password protected uh, behind, behind your classroom. Only the people that are in your classroom have access to that link. Be careful with the security and privacy of Google Meet because those links stay active. The meetings don't end when you press end meeting. There, there are a few security issues with it. And Google Meet doesn't have the polling, doesn't have the breakout rooms, doesn't have the whiteboard. So as much as it can, please use uh, the virtual classroom tool by Bongo. But if you must, here's a super quick and super easy way to just give your students a Google Meet. So I can say, hey guys, 1230, there's a meeting and watch how fast I can have that meeting set up. So I'm going to click on the quick links button right here, the third icon. I'm gonna scroll down. I've integrated Google Meet, just click it. Bingo, there's my meeting, already set up. Come to the meeting today at 12.30, that's the link. I don't have to go to my calendar, I don't have to invite them through my calendar, I don't have to add participants, I just, anyone that is a participant in my classroom on my class list has access to that right there. And then, as always, it's good to use your, uh, your start dates and end dates within your announcements tool, uh, but that's a really great and quick and probably the best way to use Google Meet for safety and security reasons. Uh, at the same time, since we're here with the quick links, if you've already set up a virtual meeting and you want to get that, that information out to your students, you can go to virtual meeting right here, click that as well, pick the meeting that you've set up. Here's my meeting, I'll click on it. And now it puts a link into that meeting as well. Uh, as I've said to you in the past, you should be trying to run everything through your announcements here. Uh, so you can have you know, your whole schedule for your day. At nine, we're doing this. At 10, we're doing this. At 9.30, here's the meeting. At 10 o'clock, here's the document I want to give you. You can have all that stuff just present in your announcements tool. 
once you publish that and save that, your students will have access. Uh, they can access your Google Meet if you really need to use sound, and you shouldn't have any issues using the sound inside of Google Meet. They've added that ability. So then once you publish that meeting, your students will be able to see it when they log on to your class. And I'll just quickly show you how that'll look. So they would come in, 12.30, join the meeting. This is Google Meet. It'll open in a new tab, which is really nice, so they won't lose where they are uh, in the course on the other page. It'll open in a new tab. They would click on Join Now, and it would just take them right into the meeting. If your students have any issues with um, uh, bandwidth and with not having very strong internet, they might want to shut off video here at this point and turn off their camera, or if they just don't want you to see into their house, that's one thing. Um, uh, that would be another tip. Uh, but really, they would just click Join Now once you've been in there, and that takes them into the meeting. It's, it's really that simple. Uh, and uh, let me turn off my camera. Uh, it's really that simple. And now they're in the Google meeting. And when you are inside of here, you can present, share your screen, uh, that sort of thing. However, there's no controlling their mics. There's no controlling uh, the chat, anything like that inside of Google Meets. And like I mentioned before, this link to this meeting stays open. So just be careful. Uh, just be aware of that when you're in uh, a Google meeting. Uh, again, when I'm in a Google Meet, I would record it as well. Uh, you can do that by going to the three little dots on the bottom right and click record meeting just in case anything happens, just in case anything goes wrong in here, you'll have a recording of it. Uh, otherwise, these meetings are kind of gone and there's no, there's no record of them. So it's really a good idea to record as well. And I will end the call. I'll head back to my course and same thing now if they came in and we're going into my virtual class it'll open up in Pongo uh, they'll click join and they shouldn't see any of the dial-in information that's one thing I'm going to make sure about as well and then the meeting will look just as it did when we were in here earlier anyway I hope that helps uh, with all of your questions I hope that helps uh, as you move forward while we're remote for the next who knows how long Otherwise, I hope this was helpful. I hope this addressed uh, a lot of your questions. I've been getting a number of questions this week about, about the meeting tools. If you're very adventurous and you are, uh, you know, consider yourself pretty techie, I do have another possible workaround for a virtual classroom by Bongo. Let me know and I can share that with you, but I, I won't share it in this video right now. Anyway, hope that helps. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, please let me know and I hope things are going well with you. Take care.